Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship. We welcome you this morning, and we welcome those who are watching us online, and and we hope that you enjoy our worship service. Gracious and holy God, here we are gathered as your people, inspired by your spirit to witness more effectively, to listen more deeply, to speak more truthfully, to live more peaceably, to love more energetically, to teach more eloquently, to pray more seriously, to worship more enthusiastically, to celebrate more joyfully, to sing more faithfully, and to give more generously, and to serve more compassionately. And we ask these things in your holy name. Amen. Good morning. Our opening hymn is 399. Take my life and let it be. 399. Please stand.
please remain standing for our affirmation of faith found on page 883, a statement of the faith of the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. may be seated. Now we come to a time in our worship where we share our joys and our concerns. Holy God, we come before you in prayer, lifting to you our joys and concerns, the hopes and dreams of our lives. May we also be open to your voice, but breaking through in our lives that we may see with new eyes and hear with new ears the direction you would have us to go. Bless, we pray, this gathering of your people, that we may grow and flourish in your love and grace for the purpose to which you would have us, that you would call us. Hear our prayers for those whose lives have been, have been touched those who, who have been touched by your love and grace, those who are worried, and those who have touched us. We pray for those who are in pain, for those who are ill, for those who grieve. And may we, we touch their lives, not only through our prayers, but through our lives and actions as well. Guide us, bless us, uplift us, and hold us, for we are your children Call to your purpose in your world. Hear our prayers, those spoken and those hidden in our hearts. And may we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Where our ushers come forth for God's tithes and our offerings.
please stand, please? God of boundless love, in this sacred moment of giving, we come before you recognizing your un unwavering compassion and tender mercy. As we offer our gifts, we also lift our hearts in prayer for all who are burdened with pain and uncertainty. May your healing touch reach those in need, and may our love bring comfort and strength to troubled hearts. And we ask these things in your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. Our anthem today is based on a passage from Hebrews. Through Jesus, let us offer up to God the sacrifice of praise and never forget to show kindness to others and to share with others, for these are the sacrifices that please our God. reading this morning from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, page 194. 
put off your old nature, which belongs to your former self, your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new nature, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away falsehood, let everyone speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his hands, so that he may be able to give to those in need. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for edifying, as fits the occasion, that it may impart grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, in whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Holy and gracious God, our words mean something. How we treat others means something. Lord, forgive us for our failures. Help us to hear your word this morning and help us to make uh, help it to make us have better hearts and transform our lives to be better people. In your holy name we pray. Amen. How we talk reveals a whole lot about who we are. You can tell who I am because of my heavy accent. The Texans were always giving me a hard time about my Tennessee accent when I was in Texas. And you can tell I'm from Appalachia. Now, you know I'm from Appalachia because the way I say Appalachia. It's not Appalachia. If you live in Appalachia, it's Appalachia. Or maybe even like throw an apple at you. <laughs> so you can tell who I am by, by my accent. And if someone comes up to you and says, I was driving the other day when I had a punctured tire, T-Y-R-E. I pulled off the verge and opened the boot, and there was no spare. So I opened the bonnet. Fortunately, an, a lorry driver saw the raised bonnet and stopped to help me out. Anyone who speaks like this is likely to be British, right? From the British Isles. Winston Churchill said, the English and the Americans are two great peoples divided by a common language. <laughs> so here's the American translation. I was going out the other day when I had a flat tire, T-I-R-E. I pulled off the shoulder and opened the trunk and there was no spare. So I opened the hood Fortunately, a truck driver saw a raised hood and stopped to help. The way we talk can also reveal something about how committed we are to being Christian. A preschool teacher tells the story of the four-year-old was sent to apologize to a child he hit on the playground. Several minutes later, he struck again. When the teacher called the boy over, he said, that's okay, I'll apologize to him later. A major misunderstanding. It took the teacher quite a while to persuade the boy that hitting another child was not okay, and even if you apologized, it was still not okay. What's the point of apologizing if we're gonna do it again? But we do. We do that as adults. We do the same things over and over. You know, when I read this scripture, it, it, it was pointing right back at me, reminding me of what it means to be a Christian. 
And what I say and what I do is very important in my, in my life and the life of others. And how important it is to talk the talk and walk the walk. Paul is reminding the Ephesians of their call to turn aside from their past way of life as pagans. He says there's two ways. There's virtue and vice, Christian and pagan, and world, worldly and godly. Paul sees through the lens that is, character, that is a characteristically Jewish view of Gentile immortality. He sees that we are baptized into Christ, and now the church is to separate itself or ourselves from the immorality of the Gentile past. So we're supposed to be different. And I'm sure it was very hard for Paul because he was talking to Gentiles that had just been converted to Christianity and how difficult that must have been for him. And yet we're still doing the same type of things today. You know, John says, be in the world, but not of the world. Now, Paul was a rabbi who served with other leaders who constantly alluded to scriptures. And the scriptures in that day was the Old Testament or Paul's other writings because they, Paul's writings became our first New Testament scriptures. So what's the message here in Ephesians? The message is how we speak and act as Christians is that we are to imitate Christ. We put away our former way of life, our old self, that's corrupt and deluded by its lust. And we are being renewed in the spirit of our minds. It's almost like taking off old clothes and putting back on new clothes. And that's actually what they did. That's how they baptized in ancient times. They actually took their clothes off. They walked down into the water. They were immersed in the water and they came back up and put new clothes on. So they left the old behind, physically and literally and spiritually. So we clothe ourselves with the new self, creating, created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So we are to put away our false self, any falsehoods, and we speak the truth to our neighbors. Why? Why are we supposed to do this, does Paul say? Because we are members of one another. Do we think about being members of one another? We are. We're members of one another. We're the same family. We're all children of God. So this seems simple, but Pontius Pilate asked the question, what is truth? How do we speak the truth? And what is truth? We saw truth in Jesus, didn't we? Telling the truth isn't always straightforward and simple, is it? Sometimes speaking the truth can hurt another person, can't it? And yet speaking the truth always and everywhere is important to being Christian. But the truth has to be spoken with love and grace. Be angry, the Bible says. What? Paul's telling us to be angry? Yeah. Anger is not wrong in and of itself, is it? There's nothing wrong with anger. We all have that human emotion. We all have that. And it's, it's a healthy thing to have because it protects us. Jesus was angry in Scripture. He was angry at the Pharisees. In Mark 3, he looked up around the, uh, at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart because the Pharisees objected to Jesus' plan to heal the man with the withered hand on the Sabbath. And Jesus was angry when he overturned the tables of the money changers in the temple. He says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. And one thing about having, having to do, well, when I did the, when I was a chaplain, you have to do part of your chaplaincy before you can be a chaplain is you have to do a clinical practical experience, the CPE. And the first thing they teach you is pay attention to your anger. 
is telling you something. It's telling you something about yourself. It's telling you something about someone else. And it's important to listen to your anger because it's important to have those emotions. Anger, joy, those are God-given emotions. But what does Paul say? Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't let the sun go down. Now, in John's version of the story, Jesus even cracks a whip of cords when he's at the temple. And that's not anything nice, is it? But notice that Paul doesn't talk about knives here. A lot of times when we're being nice, are we really being deceitful? Sometimes we can be nice and really mean it. And sometimes we can be nice and not telling the truth. Paul calls us not to be nice, but to be kind. To be kind and build one another up. Kindness is one of the purest forms of being an imitator of God. Kindness, true kindness. To be kind means that do we, we do not offer snide or bitter remarks to others. To be kind is when we, we, can be, we can be unkind even with our body language. When someone's talking and we're like this, we're not receiving them very well, are we? <laughs> when we roll our eyes at what other people say, we're not receiving them very well either, are we? Or when we're making faces because of what they have to say. Like, we're the only ones that have anything to say that's important. That's not being kind, is it? We are not building one another up. Perhaps we're even being arrogant, thinking that we're the only one who has anything important. We don't talk about others behind their backs, ruining their reputation with gossip, or things that need to be left unsaid. Sometimes my brain gets ahead of my, my, my mouth gets ahead of my brain. And I need to leave things unsaid. I don't know about you. Kindness is not intentionally trying to trap someone like the Pharisees did with Jesus to try to trap him in public, to get him in trouble, to, to, to accuse him of something. But we are kind and we speak to one another individually. Paul calls us to promote kindness. Promote kindness. Be kind. You've seen those signs? Be kind. In a world, I've got a t-shirt that says, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. Now back to the anger. Anger is God-given an emotion, but we are not supposed to let the sun go down on our anger. Holding on to anger becomes an obsession. We end up nursing it to the point that it, that it results in a fixation. When we nurse our anger, it just grows. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And sometimes even when we share our anger. You know, it's real easy to, to say, did you hear what such and such did to me? <laughs> that is sharing our anger in a negative way. But to say, I'm hurt, I feel hurt, when you do this and being honest to the other person is building each other up. Our words are to be a blessing. But when we are angry, we often say words we don't really mean because we are hurt and angry. When anger is our tone of voice, it's very different than our normal tone of voice, isn't it? Sometimes we say, I'm not angry. When we don't speak the truth to one another, we are cheating the other person because we're supposed to speak the truth. We're supposed to not put on falsehoods, but put on truth. 
and do that with love and generosity and grace. You know, the enemies of our soul are ignorance, death, and bondage. The opposites are knowledge, life, and freedom. Many reforms in human history would not have happened without righteous anger. Think about that. William Wilberforce used his anger to labor tirelessly for much of his life until the English Parliament finally abolished slavery. And think of those today whose crusade against human trafficking, who kept public publicizing the truths about human trafficking, which most of us don't really want to hear. We don't want to hear it, we don't want to read about it, and we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to see it. And yet, it's our God-given duty to, to listen to the truth. The myth of Christianity is that we close off our minds, ceasing all serious thought, and live a shadow fantasy world divorced from the solid truths of a real life. Genuine Christianity opens our minds so that we can grasp truth at a deeper and deeper and deeper level. When we draw close to Christ, it's a matter of our hearts and minds being open with insight and imagination that comes from Christ drawing near to us. Our hearts and minds need to be changed because they are the source of our behavior. To do this, we have to learn to identify our moods and our, our patterns of behavior to see which ones are taking us in the right direction and which ones are taking us in the wrong direction. To be kind, we are to be tender-hearted or compassionate. We are to offer forgiveness just as Jesus offered forgiveness to us. And you know, the, the forgiveness Jesus offered us, none of us earned it, did we? And none of us deserve it. Paul says, do not make room for the devil. There's an old saying, give the devil an inch and he'll become your ruler. Our prayer that we pray every Sunday says, lead us not into temptation. Arnold Glasclough once said, temptation usually comes in a door that has been deliberately left open. How do we leave those doors open? Christians who align themselves with hatred and violence and chaos are not Christians, they're anti-Christ, aren't they? Not the anti-Christ, but they're anti-Christ. Be followers of Jesus. And when we're that, we speak in love, we don't speak in hate, do we? Paul states, thieves must give up stealing rather than let them, rather let them labor and work honestly with their hands so that they have something to share with the needy. Not only give up thieving, but to share with others. Notice this text doesn't say, if you don't work, you don't eat. We hear that a lot in our world today, don't we? It says that we are automatically supposed to share our abundance with others. A portion of our earnings are automatically expected to be shared. All of these things is what it means to live a Christian life. We are to exercise self-control and restrained behavior. Now don't ask me if I do all of these because I don't, and I wish I did because this scripture, I told Joel this morning, it just kind of slapped me in the face. We are to respect one another and speak directly to one another. We are to avoid slandering others. We are to be imitators of God with compassion and kindness and love and grace. And you know, when you think about it, ethics is a way of making the gospel concrete in our lives. It is not our salvation, 
but it is our testimony to our love of Christ and our being transformed by Christ. I don't know about you, but this lesson really spoke to me. What words do we like to hear? And how do we like to be treated? All of us like to be loved and told that we are loved. We like to be lifted up by others. We don't like to be gossiped about behind our backs. And perhaps these things are what we need to practice to build each other up because we're members of one another. May we believe as those whom God's Holy Spirit has placed God's mark. You know, when we're baptized, we go under the water and we die to Christ and we raise, I mean, we die to ourselves and we raise to Christ. You know, matter of fact, I baptized over at high school, I baptized one of our parishioners and he was really, really tall. And he didn't go under the first time. So, so I push you back down. <laughs> well, Joe made a joke out of it, but I really thought it's important that we really go under that water and come back up. Because we do die to Christ when we go under and we are raised to, I mean, die to ourselves and raised to Christ. Keep saying that wrong. But Joe gave me a hard time. He said he was going to wear a, a a collar the next day to church <laughs> to show that I'd pushed him down the second time. <clears throat> but these things are important. It's important that we do die to, die to our old selves, put on Christ, put on a new life, a new body, a new attitude. You know, I can't help but think of that song, a new attitude, new attitude. Sometimes we just need a new attitude. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending forth hymn is 700, Abide With Me. We'll sing verses 1 and 5 of 700. Please stand. going to offer you both a benediction and a blessing for our food. Now go and be fruitful followers of God. Speak words of kindness and live lives of peace. Gracious God, we thank you for the food that we're about to eat. We pray that you would bless the hands that prepared it. And Lord, we just pray that you would nourish our bodies as well as our souls. Help us to be in fellowship with each other, building one another up in joy because we are following you. In Christ's name, amen.